and then you guys watched me decoupage this really cool handsome cowboy on here and then I sat here hi Mike um, I sat here and looked at him for a couple of days and thought okay this isn't working for me um, I had all of this dry sage which actually matched this paper perfectly and excuse my hands I uh, was cleaning some polishing some silver today and it just leaves you all yunky and I always forget to put gloves on so I either have paint on or some kind of gunk on me so anyway there was just too much of this one color on here and I didn't like it but I do love the green in his hat and the red in his shirt so I topped the top with chocolate and then there's legs on the bottom here and I don't even know if you can if I can get the camera down low enough for you to see the legs sort of right here and I painted them chocolate and what my plan is and it could change by next week Susan you agree it was just too much of one color let me get the comments back here um it it was just too much of one color and i love this palmetto green i literally could paint everything in palmetto so i base coated everything that had been sage before is in palmetto this is chocolate and the legs down here are in chocolate and what i'm going to do is on the top here, I'm going to do it in no paint gel stain um, and the legs, so they will match. And what I'm going to do with the rest of it, if you guys saw me do the sunflower dresser a couple of months ago, you'll know what I'm going to do on here. We're just, we're doing the same technique. We're just, um, on my light over here we're just doing different colors and I think it's a really fun technique and one you don't see real often so I thought well this would be a good time to do it so as you can see I base coated this in palmetto and it's not exactly palmetto it's the same green that i mixed up on the um the jacobean uh cabinet that i did a few months ago with the magnolia stencil on it i had some of that left and this was palmetto a little bit of antebellum blue and a little bit of midnight skies in this and all I want is just a base coat on here. And it's not even a good solid base coat. I just put it on last night so it would be good and dry today. You can see that there's brush strokes in it and it doesn't really matter because what we're gonna do today is we're going to, um, in an empty jar, we're going to add some dried sage. I'm going to see if I can get it up here. All right, I'm adding some dried sage on here. And you guys, there's a lot of paint product in this project. So I did list it all at the top of the description on here for you to make things easier. And we're going to use some sea spray. And if you've never used this before, it's pretty cool stuff. It's texture additive. And what it does is it adds texture to your paint. It will thicken it up. Um, you know, like I've used it to do snow on Christmas trees and beards on Santas and on gnomes. And this is what I used when I did the um, sunflower chest. And so I'm going to pour some of this into an empty, empty jar. Put 
close this back up. Thanks, Susan. So you're new to um, chalk painting furniture or new to my page? You said you're new. If you're new to chalk painting, this is going to be uh, really interesting to you. Okay, so now I'm going to add a little bit of the sea spray to the dried sage. And I'm not gonna add a whole lot. Okay, here's the sea spray. And it comes with a little cup, a little measuring cup. And that's more than I want, so I'm gonna put some in. in about half of what was there and I'm gonna stir it up with a popsicle stick and the more you stir it the smoother it will get and I don't want it to get real smooth I the purpose that I'm using this for is for texture and I may have to mix some more but we'll start off with this and you guys, when you're using that sea spray, I just wanna be sure to remember to tell you, um, it's a thickener. So when you're done with whatever you're applying it with, just throw that away. That's why I'm using an empty container here. Um, your brushes, if you're using good brushes, you need to take them outside and clean them off with your hose. You don't wanna, um, you don't want to wash that down your sink because it could affect your plumbing. So I'm using the wood graining tool and the it comes with this little triangle portion of it. And what I'm going to use is probably, I can't remember the last time if I used the middle one here. Let me see. I have a really bad glare from that light. Let me see if I can adjust that. That should be better. Okay, so I can't remember if we're using this set of teeth or if we're using this set of teeth. I'm kind of thinking maybe it was the wide set, but I'm not sure. It doesn't matter, we'll find out when we get going on this. And then the other two pieces in here are the wood graining. And they're super fun to use, you guys. There's a small one. And there's a bigger one. And, and I may end up using this wood grain tool on the top here. Let me move the camera up. When you use this tool, you are simply, you have a base coat down and then you paint on a contrasting color on the top and you just paint it on and then you take this wood grain tool and you push it along and rock it and drag it and push it and rock it and drag it and when you do that it makes a really cool wood pattern and then you brush on another section of paint here and you do the same thing, just pushing, rocking, dragging. And the best thing to do is just to practice on some wood is the best thing to do. Um, but you do get a really cool wood grain. And so I may end up doing that on the top of this. Like I said, this is just one of those pieces that just talks to you and tells you what to do. And I always tell people that and encourage them to listen to it because if you're not sure about something, that piece of furniture will clue you in. So 
We're going to start off here. I'm going to get some more paint to open before we get started. So I've got the base coat of the green. The, we'll just call it Palmetto. And I want some other color to come out. The, the red, this is Rusty Nail. I want this to come out because that's in his shirt. And I want some chocolate to come out. And we've already got the green on there. I keep losing the comments. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, you guys, is I'm going to put some of the chocolate brown on here, and I'm going to be really random with it. You're gonna think this is crazy, but just bear with me, because it does turn out really cool. The wood graining tool is available on my website if you're interested in it. Okay, you guys, I'm just randomly putting this chocolate brown on, kind of cross hatching. I want it to show through when I go and put the sage green on. And I'm gonna leave this part down here. At least I think I am. I'm going to leave it, uh, the palmetto. Okay. And then I'm going to put some of this rusty nail Let me know, you guys, if you think this is crazy. This rusty nail's been sitting here unused for a long time, and it's got some stringies in it and is thick. But for this process, it's just not even going to matter. I really like that rusty nail in here. Okay, that's probably good enough, you guys. So next comes the fun part. So now I'm gonna start applying the dried sage with the sea spray in it. And I'm just gonna go in sections here. And I'm just gonna paint this section And then I'm gonna take the tool, here it is. And let's start off with the, this end of it. And I'm just gonna take it and scrape down on it, going down. And you get this burlapy effect to it. And then I'm just gonna wipe that off and go back this way. And so what happens, you guys, is you can start to see these colors that I put in underneath there, and you can go over it more than one time. And 
And we want all three of these colors coming through. We wanna see the green, we wanna see some of the brown, a hint of that red coming through. Isn't that cool, you guys? So you just do a section at a time. When this is all dry, then you uh, can sand it lightly with a um, 220 sanding pad. And your texture will still be there and the pattern will still be there. But uh, by sanding it, you get a nice finish to it and um, like I on the sunflower chest I went over it and put a, a transfer on it and it was really pretty you guys it's one of my favorite pieces I've ever done so each time I go down and it does not need to be straight because this is like burlap and if you look at burlap it's not perfect, it's not straight, it has waviness to it, it has threads in it that are thicker than others, it actually has knots in the thread. And so you just keep doing it until you get the color and the effect that you want. And I really like this over here on this side This is where I stopped and started and I want to okay so we'll get some more on Oh, you know what? I had some pine cone down here too I thought would be interesting in this. I'm just gonna put a few streaks of this pine cone in here too. Yeah, it's a fun thing to do, you guys. And you could put this texture on lots of things. You could do it if you're making uh, wood signs. This would be a cool texture for doing signs. It would be a cool texture for, like if you're doing, you know, the book covers are really popular. This would be cool to do on a book cover. And there is no right or wrong on it. So you might be intimidated by trying something like this, but like I'm saying, there is no right or wrong. All we're doing is creating texture. And what I did on the sunflower chest is um, I went back after it was, you know, I sanded it, smoothed it out, and then I went back and used 
brown wax on it and shadowed, did shadows and, and more color using the brown wax on it. You guys can go back and find the video on that and finished pictures on it. I haven't actually posted a staged picture yet because I need to get the mirror done that goes with it. Um, yes, I am doing it in small patches. It's okay to let it like set up a little bit. Um, across the bottom here, since I've demoed up here across the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and just paint the whole bottom of it. When you mix up this paint um, with a sea spray, I recommend that you um, pour some off into another jar. Mix up the amount that you think you're going to need um, because it's not going to store well. It'll store for a few days, but like I said, it's a thickener and it will set up just like cement and dry really, really hard. It's a really durable finish. Okay. I'm gonna let that sit there for a minute. I'm gonna spray some of the gunk off of my little tool here. I did try up here the pointed end of it, but I really like this medium one the best. That's one I thought I used, but I wasn't positive. I've slept a few nights since I did that other piece. I'm going to texture this section up here too. Okay, so I'm gonna start by going across this way. And then I'm gonna go down. I think I'll go from the bottom and go up. I'm just spraying this just to, to wipe out between the teeth. I think I just need to wet my paper towel. That's probably a better way to do it. So I thought this texture and the spots of color on here would look more Western and um, more interesting than just, it was just all the dried sage. 
and it's dry sage now, but it has other it has other things going for it. It has texture, it has other colors that are in the decoupage tissue. I just think it looks more interesting now. I'm thinking I might have mixed this up a little thicker than what I did when I used the burlap. And it doesn't matter if I go back and forth between um, the different sizes of teeth. It just gives you more interest and character going on. Like I said, there is no right or wrong. There's no rule. There's only what is um, pleasing to your eye. And there's a couple of smooth spots in here that are really, really smooth, like right in here. And there's a smooth one right here. And I couldn't tell you why that is smooth like that because I've gone over it quite a few times. But again, that just adds texture and interest to the piece. So it's perfectly fine. Okay, now I'm going to do this top part up here and I'm gonna add a little bit of the pine cone up there. probably going to have to mix a little bit more of this up. I'm going to go ahead and paint this whole section. And we've got this top drawer up here. I'm just going to butt it up. So tell me you guys, is this is this something that you think you might be interested in, in trying? Or is this just too wild for you? Let me know what you guys think. I'm just gonna put some tape on here, just so I don't have to be quite so careful. This chest has already had a lot of paint on it. I slick stick two coats on it. And then it had two coats of the dried sage and then a coat of the um, palmetto mix. And now it's getting a coat of a variety of colors. The paint is never gonna come off this piece, that's for sure. Okay. Yeah, you do get to play with so much color and I'm going to flip it back around because I want you to see, I need to do the edges around where it's decoupaged. And so you'll get a chance to see how those colors start to work for this.
And you can also see why it wasn't important that I had a like a really solid base coat of the palmetto on here. I just want, I don't want you to look at it and go, oh, that's got green in it. I just want you to look at it and go, oh, wow, that's really cool. It's interesting. It's not what you see every day. So you guys, a lot of the pieces I've been doing lately, I'm actually going to hang on to and not put up for sale right away because the Pinners Conference is coming up. It's gonna be here in just, what, four months, I think? Um, and so I'll have these pieces on display in my booth at the Pinners Conference, but um, all the Dixie Bell classes, and I'm teaching three classes, and all the Dixie Bell classes are free, you guys. And um, I haven't looked lately. I know there's been a lot of enrollment in them because they fill up fast because they're the only free classes at the Pinners Conference. But these pieces will be on display in my booth if you wanna see what they look like live and in person. And I would encourage you guys to get signed up for the classes, they're super fun. I know some of you have already. This looks cool, you guys, I love this. I'm gonna give it a little spray down here because I wanna get a little bit more of this off. Okay, I'm really happy with this side. I'm gonna spin you guys around. It's easier said than done with this um, trolley. This trolley has a handle and the handle is a pain in the neck. So when I get this piece off of here, I'm gonna take that little trolley off. Okay. I'll back you guys up so you can see this handsome dude. Hi, Goldie. Just moving this around. I'm gonna tape this top off. Well, I only need to tape it off right there on the edge. <laughs> Goldie, you're so cute. Okay, so if you remember, I tore off all of the edges here when I um, 
decoupaged the hunk of burning love on here. And then when I decided to paint it the palmetto, um, I just kind of feathered it in in there. I just added a little bit of water to this because um, it's really thickening up and I don't need it quite to be that thick. So that's the thing. You have control over it. You can thin it down. You can thicken it up. I'm going to take a little bit of the pine cone and put some of that on. A little dab of the chocolate and just a little dab of the rusty nail which matches his shirt perfectly you guys And I'm not putting too much on. Just enough that it's noticeable. Okay. We want it to be noticeable. We just don't want it to be the only thing you see. Now I lost, oh, here it is. So we're gonna blend this all in. He sure did decoupage on nice. I, um, after the live last week, I put um, another coat of gator hide on top. And there were a couple of places, especially up here uh, on that curvature of the drawer that had bubbles under them. So I took a straight pin and poked the holes and put a whole lot of gator hide in there, hoping I could get it to seep through underneath and then liberally put gator hide on the top of it. And I thought, well, worse comes to worse in the morning, I can always just iron him. And I got up with the intentions of uh, having to iron him and didn't have to, he was he was just perfect when I got up the next morning. He's probably perfect every morning, don't you ladies think? I won't ask the gentlemen on here. Now see that matches really good and there's still um, some interest. It isn't like just all one color on there. So tonight when I'm done with this, I'll sit here on my couch and look at him again <laughs> and see what he thinks about all of this. And you might be surprised, but the good news is there's another nightstand, you guys, and that one's going to have the cowgirl on it. And I will have figured everything out when I finish doing, hi, Susie. I will have finished everything out when I get done with this dude and she'll go much faster. I'll still have the slick sticker, but I won't have so much base coat on it. Okay, so I'm starting up here and just going down. That is cool, you guys. doing the side of the 
drawer over here. I'm so glad I thought of doing this texture because it is really awesome. And that looks, that blends really cool, you guys, with that paper. <laughs> Susie, he is a good looking guy. I heard on TV last night that on the 4th of July, if you guys are all, any of you are fans of Yellowstone, they're doing a marathon on the 4th of July of all three seasons because um, I don't know what date the new one starts, but I think it's really close and I'm sure that's why they're doing the, the marathon. Okay, and you guys saw, I didn't have to be careful. This was torn paper. It had the um, dried sage already painted on it. We added some additional color to it. So it blends right in with this paper. And I'll probably come back over this piece with some um, with some wax, probably brown wax, maybe even a little grunge gray. And if there's any areas that need additional blending, but I think he's pretty good looking. Okay, let's get this other side done. Let's see, I think I don't wanna turn that. I think I will. I'll turn this whole thing. Let me move all my paint. do this side next. I have everything sitting right here, but I don't know how I can lose things. I lost a whole roll of paper towels, people. Oh. I set paint on top of it. Oh, goodness. I did that just in case Bogey went walking by. He didn't step in my paint. I know you guys see him walking by from time to time. He's doing much better, by the way, you guys. I'm happy to say. Okay, so I already have some red on here, so we'll get some red in here. So do you guys have plans for the 4th of July? This time last week, 
we were all worried about the fires up north and they're still all burning, but um, at least where my daughter is, that one I think I saw this morning was 76% contained. And she drove up there yesterday. I'm going up there on Thursday or Friday, just depends on how I get things done. Yeah, I like grunge gray too. That was the first Dixie Belle product you ever used? That's an odd thing to have it be your first product. You guys, pine cone is one of the most underused paints in my opinion. And I use it on so many projects. It's great for signs like those um, 1776 signs that I did last Wednesday. If you caught the craft segment, that had pine cone in it, had chocolate in it. It's a staple, you know, it's kind of like you need to have black. Okay, so we have all of those colors on and now we're gonna come back with, we might just have enough. I'm gonna squirt some water in it. Okay, I'm going to do this section up here first. I need to tape off this side. It's kind of like talking to myself, you guys. kick you right out of the camera. Susan, that's cool. What what piece do you think you're going to do it on? I'll tell you, the first time I tried this out, I took a, a canvas, you know, just like a painting canvas, and I painted that and did this burlap. And I was just pleased as pie with myself and how it turned out. Um, and then I took that same canvas because I knew I wanted to do that sunflower so I painted um, freehand a really pretty sunflower on it, and then I uh, printed off on my Cricut, You Are My Sunshine, and framed it. It's a really cute little piece. I like it a lot. But I experimented on another piece before I did it on a piece of furniture just to be sure I could do it. Because the furniture, when I did it, I did it live, <laughs> so, you know, it could have been a complete fail. When you, don't, when you do those lives, you should, you know, have at least a 75% chance that you know what you're gonna do is gonna come out okay. I mean, we all have fails. Even when you practice something, we all have fails. I'm gonna go ahead and get this down here on this lower half.
Oh, Susan, that's very sweet of you. Um, you might want to go back and watch the video that I did on the sunflower piece also. guys, I'm going to have just enough paint. I don't think there'll be anything left over. I can just throw this container in the trash. Oh shoot, I got to go around the front too. Maybe not. I might have to mix up a little bit more. definitely going to have to mix up a little more. I got real close. I just have that small section on the front. But remember, you don't want to use your good brushes, your good Dixie Belle brushes for this. You want to definitely use a chip brush so that when you're done, you can just throw it away. Let's get scraping on this one. Got my rag, got my little triangle, got my spray bottle. Yeah, trying things out on canvas is always a good way to figure out the pros and cons of what you're trying to accomplish. And the next step on this, as I mentioned, I will give it a nice sanding and um, and then I'll top coat it. And I think I'm gonna top coat it with um, you know, I, I like to use either, just for the front and the sides, I'm going to um, use the top coat flat so that this texture stays flat and doesn't have a sheen to it. Uh, on the top, I'm going to use no paint gel stain on it. And then that will, um, I'll top coat that in gator hide so that it's well protected so you know lots of times people set drinks and stuff on their nightstands i know i do every single night 
and I want it protected so that if there's any condensation or spillage or anything, it doesn't ruin your finish. And if you're doing furniture to sell, you should always think about that. What is somebody else going to do with this piece of furniture? And give it the best finish you can um, because you don't, you don't want that piece of furniture coming back later. And they said, well, the paint bubbled up on this. Well, why? Well, I set a glass of iced tea on it and the ice melted and it had condensation and you know, nothing's going to hold up to that kind of thing. So, uh, but the gator hide is water repellent. So it won't let it soak in. And anytime it's a surface where I think water could come in contact with it, you know, like when I'm doing the gator hide, I have a minimum of three to four coats of gator hide on it by the time I'm finished. Because once I get the second coat of gator hide on, then I use steel wool, the uh, four aught steel wool, and give it a good sanding down, and then you wipe it off really well with a tack cloth, and that really buffs it to a beautiful shine. Ask Mary, Mary would know. And by doing that, you know, you if it's a surface like a tabletop, coffee table, nightstand, top of a dresser that you know is gonna come in contact with, probably come in contact with a liquid, you wanna always have it well protected. You can't overdo it. And if any of you are sign makers, this is a really good thing to make signs with. So are any of you working on projects right now? I think this color of dried sage looks so much better now that there's other that there's texture and that there's other colors in this tissue paper showing through. It was just too much of the same old same old. And you guys, if you want your stuff to look unique, this is a, a technique that isn't done a lot. I learned it from Brandy, and I honestly haven't seen anybody else doing it, which I'm surprised. They might just be too intimidated, but 
it's honestly, it's just as easy as it looks. And I'm thinking a piece like this in Arizona will sell super fast. Okay, I'm really happy with that finish. Let me see if I can get you guys in any closer to see that texture. There you can see it a little bit. I'm gonna turn this around just a tiny bit. We just have that little section on the front and then we're done. At least with this portion we are. And I'm going to just mix up the smallest amount of sage. You don't need very much. Just a tiny bit of the sea spray. Give it a quick stir. just perfect. Let that sit for just a moment and we'll get a little color on the front of this real quick. I really like what the other side looks like you guys. I mean this side up front that we did. It looks cool. Also, I noticed, and I can make up for it now, I noticed on this side over here that that was slightly wider, and I had my ruler out, but you know, when you're laying paper down, sometimes it's not as easy to manage. But this side is narrower than this side is. So again, I can make up for that with this technique and just put my um, texture on a little bit wider on this side. So this technique does cover up a multitude of sins that nobody else would ever even be aware of. This is such a pretty red. Matches that stamp really nice too. Okay. stray hairs you know you guys when you get your um, chip brushes 
before you use them, it's always a good idea to um, wash them first because that gets rid of a lot of your stray hairs. And I typically, I use my um, chip brushes over and over and over again, and um, I use them a lot for waxing. And you know, when they get all too shaggy, I just take the scissors and just keep trimming them down, even when they're just stubs, I don't care. Okay, so we got enough of that. We didn't need very much. This is the home stretch, you guys. Hang in there. The nice thing is you can just go over it as many times as you want. <clears throat> Okay, you guys, that, that's that. Let's take this tape off the front. And let me swing this camera around. Actually, I'm gonna move the piece around. What do you guys think? I'm really happy with him. I think he turned out super pretty. I think this whole thing over on the sides of the paper really blends in. Oh, thanks you guys. It really blends in well um, with the paper. It's a really nice transition and it's bringing out all the colors that are on this paper and it looks good on the sides. And um, I still have to decide, you guys tell me in the comments what you think. Should I leave this down here on the bottom? Should I leave this, the palmetto green, all the way around? Um, this all the way down here will have the uh, no paint gel stain in walnut, so that'll be, have a really nice finish. But tell me, tell me in the comments what you think I should do with the green. Should I leave it that way, or should I um, do the same technique that we did everywhere else on it? I'm gonna have to sit here on the couch for a couple of days and study this and make a decision but you guys as always let me bring the camera up as always you guys you like the palmetto okay um i gotta i can never adjust this correctly <laughs> you would think i would learn 
Okay, and Su Susie, you like it too, the palmetto? Okay, so um, I just want to remind you that I'll be on here again tomorrow, same time, same station, um, at 4 o'clock Mountain Standard Time, and tomorrow is crafting day, and I've got, I have... I'm going to work with molds and I'm going to show you different ways to pour the molds. And if I can squeeze it all in, I would really like to apply the molds uh, onto a book. And I have an idea in my head what I want that book to look like. Hi, Carmen. Um, and so tomorrow we're gonna be using the molds and we're going to be using clay and we're gonna be using the resin and uh, then I'll show you a couple of different ways to apply it when it's clay, how it's moldable and bendable, and if it's resin, it's rigid, and, to, and then some molds work better with the resin because they're so delicate and have such fine design in them. So that's what we'll be doing tomorrow. So come join me for Happy Hour Crafting with Deborah Booker Designs tomorrow, same place, same time. You guys, thanks so much. I appreciate you being here with me. It means everything. I say it looks great with the same as the ends. Yeah, that, that fixed all that up. You'd never know that there was any miscalculation there. So, all right, you guys, have a great night. Thanks so much. And if you are coming back, have a happy and safe uh, 4th of July. I almost said Happy New Year. <laughs> all right, you guys, have a great night.